So there's an app called, I'm not gonna tell you what it's called, for reasons that you'll, you'll discover. They have deep fakes of voices. But what I found more interesting was the fact that you could upload your own voice. You upload audio of your own voice and then the computer sort of, does it sort of pulls it apart and then it, then you can use your, use your I apologize if that, if that was too technical for some of you. You can type stuff out and then it's your voice. I've just, I've just drunk a Diet Coke and there's a lot of stuff going on in my body. Just checking on my meme stocks. Nah, not good. But I was like, I, I already have my voice. Like, why would I? I could just, you know, it's not, I want to use someone else's voice. I hit a lot of snags. It doesn't want you to be able to do that, obviously. I dispute that what happened next is 100% my responsibility. In order to get a deep fake of a voice, you have to upload that voice reading a script that they give you to ensure that you couldn't make a deep fake of anyone but yourself. They assumed that it would be very hard to piece together audio to make that script. I think also it's, it's so the computer knows what you're reading so that it can match the words. I don't know. All I know is that when I was reading the script, I recognized it. They've probably changed it by now, but it was a script for Planet Earth the BBC documentary. It's a security measure. It would be unlikely that you would be able to find anyone who'd read those particular words in that particular order. And they were right. Because I could only think of one person in the world who had. If you ever get the opportunity to buy like a box of 30 um, Coca-Colas, Diet Cokes, don't, because you'll just end up drinking them. I almost certainly take partial responsibility for this. But I will say that they took measures to make it impossible to deep fake anyone but the person who read that script. But the, the byproduct of that was that what they really did was just kind of shine a light on the one person for whom it was possible. But they're saying the only audio that we will accept is someone reading Planet Earth. But the subtext of that is really Deepfake that guy. They made the decision for me. This was the only way of getting around the system. I say round, using the system to, I don't know, whatever I have to say to mean I don't get in trouble. Just fill in your own. I pulled up all the Blu-ray discs, five sound channels, or 5.1, I don't know what the one means. I took away most of the music and most of the sound effects. And what was left was, I mean, there was, you know, some chirping, but it was mainly just his voice. And then I chopped out all the, all the other parts and I kind of smushed them together. And then I just had Attenborough reading all of Planet Earth. And then I uploaded it. I hit snag. Software needs a bit at the start saying, this is my voice and feel free to use it in any YouTube videos. Obviously, he didn't say that. And I, I tried to get my people to contact his people, but then I realized that neither of us actually have any people. So then I did, you know, what I think any of us would have done is I, I I went full on sneakers. I pieced together sort of bits of audio. My voice is my passport. Harder than the actual, than the movie, because obviously uh, I didn't have a date with David Attenborough planned. There was nothing in the calendar. I understand that the donor of the account being used to create this voice and anyone with whom the donor shares access would be able to generate speech that sounds like this voice. Obviously that didn't work. They really made it look easy on sneakers. At that point, there was really only one thing to do, and that was to hire an impressionist. I told the guy what I wanted, and he agreed. He didn't seem to have a problem with the moral ambiguity, which was cool. Speech that sounds like this voice. So I tacked that bit onto the start and then submitted it. Hey presto, I have my Attenborough voice. It's a big responsibility having your own personal David Attenborough. I mean, obviously, initially, I thought it would be cool if he narrated everything that I did. This male has been eating ginger nut biscuits for an hour. Very soon, however, there will be no biscuits left. If he is to have more biscuits, he will need to leave the comfort of his home. He will resent this. Oh, it's raining. Why me? But I thought that's not right, is it? It's a big responsibility. It's a golden opportunity. I mean, not for me, the person monetizing this video, but for David. For David to say probably what he's always wanted to say. Anyway, this is a deep fake. So I'm really hoping I won't get in trouble. The South African Cape Giraffe. 
They feed on plant life in the savannas and can reach a height of more than six meters. Yet the future of these majestic creatures is in jeopardy. The world's tallest animal has lost 40% of its population in just three decades. Herds that used to consist of 50 animals are now rarely found in groups of more than what's the point you're not even listening, are you? You're just sitting at home thinking, oh, look at the funny orange thing. It has a long neck. I'm so tired. Tired of talking, tired of cameras, tired of narrating a day in the life of a walrus. You enjoy this bit. Oh, you like the stripy horses. But when it comes to the important bit about the planet dying, you bury your heads in the sand. So many years, so little effect. I'm angry, I'm frustrated, and to be perfectly honest, I'm running out of animals to anthropomorphize. I say the same thing every time, and it's so much worse than you think. The BBC only let me tell you the best case scenario. They're worried you might all go feral, and it would be significantly harder to collect license fees. So I'm meant to pretend there's hope, but almost all of the science is in agreement. Very soon much of what we take for granted will begin to disintegrate. And you know how quickly things can unravel. We couldn't get an Ocado order in and we almost lost our sh**. Imagine what it'll be like when there are failing harvests leading to massive food shortages, no medicines and a collapsing government. Do something. Do anything. Or in 10 years you'll see a picture of a bee and think, oh yeah, I remember when there were bees. How many documentaries do I need to make before it sinks in? It's like I'm talking into the void. Everything I say goes in one ear and out the other. Perhaps next time I'll just make it all up. I doubt anyone would notice. The fairy billed Arasari Toucan. Known for its colorful beak and propensity to alight on a branch and forget who it is, ants can lift 20 times their own body weight. But this is not impressive, because ants do not weigh very much. Crows are some of the cleverest animals on the planet. We know this because in controlled environments, several crows were able to create Facebook accounts. Dolphins are cleverer. We know this because in controlled studies, they consistently urge the crows to delete Facebook. Almost all caterpillars want to be butterflies. However, in a recent poll, two-thirds of butterflies expressed regret, saying life was richer as a caterpillar. An owl can turn its head more than 360 degrees, but then it falls off. This accounts for 64% of owl deaths. Crabs can only walk in one direction. It's estimated that over the course of a year, a spider will inadvertently swallow an average of four human beings in its sleep. Penguins can fly, they just choose not to. In order to move backwards, even by a few feet, the crab must walk the circumference of the planet. Because of this, they are often tired. In 2018, scientists discovered that one in 45 cows is actually four sheep, pretending to be a cow. Yeah, I think I could totally get away with it. 